welcome to the show that explores the methods and strategies on rocking the financial side of your music business. With over 40 years combined experience, here are your hosts, Chris Webb and Dave Tampkin. Welcome to Musicians Tip Jar, where we talk about musicians and money. Where we recognize the balance between the two, music and money, and how symbiotic they can be. I'm Chris Webb, joined by my co-host, Dave Tampkin, who seems to be more concerned about things being semi-tropic. <laughs> Sorry, hang on a second. I, what, what does that even mean? Like somewhere between Illinois and Florida? Well, semi-tropic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess that's, I, there's a lot in there, perhaps, that you don't want to go spend your time in, but I'm sure... I'm going to look up the definition after this episode. Even semi-traffic would be nicer than full-on winter at some times, you know. Yeah. Well, it's 70 degrees uh, here today in Madison in oh. the second, what, fourth day of March? Unbelievable. That's pretty Unbelievable. nice. It is nice, but also scary. My I planted some bulbs in October. They're already starting to come up a little bit. Uh-huh. It's not I cool. I'm think sure that's we're normal. Get... Is it? I... In March? I mean, I don't know. I'm just used to... Colorado, we get frost and snow in May. Yeah. You know, so I'm just worried about another frost. Sure. But, you know, may all my problems be so large, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we complete our inspiring conversation with the talented artist, Trevor Hall. We cover the money mindset journey and how it is possible to have a good relationship with it. Also, we see how Trevor is finding a way to balance all the important things in his life, including family music, purpose, and spirituality. Today's quote comes from Trevor. It says, Having the freedom to choose how I want to do things is magical, but it doesn't make it easier. And I thought I'd throw a second quote in here today from the great Dolly Parton. She said, Never get so busy making a living that you forget how to make a life. I thought you were going to do your impersonation of Dolly when you read it. You did it before we... We hit record. I think you should do it for you. <laughs> sure, yeah. I really, I really think you should do the, do the accent, you know, Southern accent, get it on there. Never get too busy. Hear it. Well, don't hear it, Chris. That's, I'm do not it. going on, to man. do a poor accent. <laughs> it's not going to be done. Okay. <laughs> you did fine there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this week's nonprofit you've heard of before from us. Uh, it's near and dear to me, the Roots Music Project in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, it's dedicated to fostering the live music scene in Colorado with a vision of transforming the region into a global music epic center. They aim to nurture artists who create music that has a lasting positive impact on the world, believing in the power of music to make the world a better place. This organization also focuses on empowering musicians, audiences, and venues to connect and create a thriving and inspiring local music community, providing assistance to artists wishing to produce their own shows outside of the organization's internal programming. If you're there, please say hello to Dave Kennedy, Ian, Matt, Mike Ligon. They do an unbelievable job there in Boulder, and you shouldn't miss a show if you have an opportunity. Check them out at rootsmusicproject.com. Trevor Hall's music is a blend of roots and folk music with touches of electronic elements and is imbued with a deep love of Eastern mysticism. This powerful symbiosis fostered a deep connectivity with his growing fan base, and Trevor has quickly matured into a leader of a growing conscious musical community. Along with numerous pilgrimages to India, he has sold out Red Rocks Amphitheater here in Colorado and as a headliner and has completed a series of sold out international tours with artists such as Ziggy Marley, Jimmy Cliff, Michael Franti, John Butler Trio, Modest Yahoo, and many more. We hope that you are inspired by our conversation and to look at the balance of what things are most important to you and in your life. Let's go. I think a lot of musicians graduate high college or, or high school or mm-hmm. dedicate themselves to becoming an artist with this notion in their head, even if they're not conscious of it, that money's always going to be a problem <laughs> mm-hmm. or that, that they're always going to have to struggle in order to make ends meet, in order to make this their living. Has there been, you know, I, I'm putting some words into your mouth, but that now that you're at a place where you're successful, Looking back, was there times where you almost quit because of money? Was there any times where you had to let go of some of the fears around money in order to keep going? Was there any of that that pops out from your your journey? Yes, absolutely. Um, 
I think, you know, as a kid, I didn't really think of it as much because I was so young, you know, when I started and touring and I was kind of just like, this is great. I get to play music and yeah, I didn't know any, you know, my dad was really helping at the time and uh, my, my dad's friend and yeah, I didn't really think of it uh, too much, I guess. And there were plenty of times where, so when I was on that label, you know, for three years, at the end of the three years, I was broke. I was living in California and um, I couldn't pay my like next month's rent mm. and I was freaking out. Mm. I was going to this, you know, temple every day, you know, that's, I was, that was, I was getting really involved in this, uh, this ashram there and well, they they just said, well, you know, I went to them with my woes of, of I can't do this anymore. Like I have no money, and it's just like so stressed. And they're like, well, just come and you can stay here. You're here every day anyway. Just stay here until you wow. get back on your feet. You know, hmm. two weeks, month, whatever you need. And and they're like my family. You know, hmm. I stayed for like seven years, but um, it was a really really tough time. You know going out on tour for, you know, month and a half, two months at a time and coming home and you, you spent money, yeah, you know, <laughs> you and must. you paid, you paid, you, you're all, all the musicians, you know, made way more than you do. You actually lost, you know, about yeah. 10 grand or like 20, 20, and when you're already broke, you're like, yeah. how the fuck am I going to do this? That, you know, when I think as I got older and obviously more mature and paying rent and bills and it's like wow this is stressing me out this is definitely stressing me out it's i just think it's natural you know it's like i don't know if i have like some like golden thing to say about it you know it's hard it's hard when you're this is your passion and it's not um you know the normal nine to five or a guaranteed income every every week or month you know um i think doesn't have to be music i mean anything like that you know it's it's hard yeah and i'm very conscious i think of after doing it for so long it's like i know that this can just be it's so fragile it can just be taken away you know away at any time you know yes. you could and so i think um it's about just being in the present moment and following that love and desire the love of music was, mm -hmm. was obviously the only thing that kept me going it's like i needed i need music every day you know i need it it is a necessity even though all the hardships were happening i i just was like i mean this is i need music i can't do anything else and i i guess i just you know got lucky and am able to do it for you know like support my family and stuff in this way but it's a tricky thing, you know. There's a lot of different different things I could say about money and like and doing your art like is what is your livelihood. It, it it it's always it there's all so many sticky situations even now like I, you know you're just trying to navigate them. Yeah. That was uh, one of the questions I had for you um how do you navigate this balance of having this niche that you're in, the music that you want to mm -hmm. keep your artistic vision, but also have to, especially now, you know, with a child too, to navigate yeah. that financial landscape. I think I've, I've just learned that um, sometimes, that, you know, I can't be emotional about it. And what I mean by that is like, when it comes to like the money aspect, I just try to be really like grounded about it and almost very dry about it i think in the past i would i would become so emotional about about the exchange of it with you know people you're working with and but you have to become like quite business-like you know in your thinking and i think for artists that's like always like a little fucking weird we don't want to do that you know we're not businessmen really you know i feel like it's important to have somebody for me, the way I deal with it, it's important for to have somebody in my corner that understands it really well Yes, and can explain it to me in an honest and, uh, uh, you know, direct way in a way that I understand, mm -hmm. you know, because then I feel 
a little uh more i feel a little like safer in my you know my body my everything my manager i mean we talk about we talk about yeah what's best for my livelihood you know family yeah and you realize that yeah this is first and foremost it's always music it's always like the love of my life and my greatest healer and teacher and everything you know um it just so happens that it also brings in energy in the form of money yeah and um you have to just acknowledge that that's the situation and when you need to work more like yeah let's go do more shows you know i need to like get this done but yeah it, that's not all the piece of the pie you know um, right. that's a positive way to look at it too like well if you need you know x mm. it's y and then z yeah is the touring it, that's a beautiful thing that you get yeah. to share your music you know and have having to, to spin that definition of what that money feels like and make it feel what you need it to feel is very important I, you know if anything i've learned that from chris throughout the years that it's the way like you said your relationship with it and you having someone explain it to you in a way that you can understand it and have a good feeling about it mm -hmm. is very important absolutely and it's still it's still uh again it's still a learning process every day but you know like becoming a dad two years ago you know i definitely think about it differently obviously you know yeah. it's just part of it you know it's a sacred it's a sacred thing money is you know yeah um i think we mix it up uh with with uh the evil of it or the stress of it and this and that is like how it's used you yes, know totally. if it's treated as a you know yeah just like a sacred entity um i think you just you would treat money differently and the how you feel about it and all this stuff but yeah it's funny because it's like even i'm uncomfortable in my body now talking about yeah. talking about money you know like it's it's just being honest like as artists it's i just feel like it's a tricky thing you know yes thank you we for don't, admitting that because yeah we don't really... want to do things we don't want to do things for the money you know we want to do things at, because of how it makes us feel yes when you start for me at least for me when i start if if i'm like writing something thinking about oh man i hope this is a fucking hit so i can get rich right <laughs> that's not what music is for me like i would have stopped like so long ago you guys yeah. like you know um so it's uh it's not obviously my first intention but i've acknowledged that it is a huge part of my world yeah. you know this being my livelihood and for me having somebody that understands that world and can that i trust and can bring me you know the knowledge and advice that i may need to navigate it that's yeah. extremely important to me but and this is interesting because when we you and i played that show together many many uh -huh. moons ago there was no spotify there was no. barely itunes if there was i don't know instagram yeah Man. Nothing. There yeah. were map quests. There were there were printed papers of maps all over the bottom of the rental car. <laughs> like seriously, no joke. Like yes, that's what it was. Man. It was you, crazy. Don't you think all of this has led to making it more uh, conducive for for an independent artist to be rewarded financially for their art, right? Because I mean, Spotify is i think a gift to artists i know that some people disagree but i i think it's wonderful i mean you can find I believe you're saying that man i can't no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I, I, he turns off he's gone yeah yeah, yeah it was, the it screen like, goes black you. <laughs> yeah thanks for your time yeah <laughs> and it, but you, you've really been able i i mean i i feel like anything i want to find about your your music i can find there now and i i appreciate that as a consumer uh -huh. you know and i think that that's a direct to consumer option now for artists mm -hmm. that wasn't there when we played that show together many times many years ago i i mean i agree i i think um i think there's a a plot there's a lot, obviously a lot of positives and negatives to music streaming and this and that but overall i think it's, it's a huge positive i think that when yeah if you're talking about that specific time you know 
there was really like one option to like make it as an artist yeah. and do it as your living and whatever. And it was to sign a record deal, have their support and go out and get all the things and whatever. That was like the road. It was like, you sign, but, but, but. oh, you got signed? Like, look, you know, like that's yes. what it was, you know? Yes. And um, that's how you were able to put out a record. But now it's just incredible how there are so many, you know, distribution platforms online spotify i'm not in spotify so that's another thing but like to have these companies like tunecore and symphonic and yeah you know Bandcamp and you know all these things like it's it's incredible what it's done for artists in my opinion to like just be able to if you've made something yeah and you want to put it out there should be nothing stopping you yeah, absolutely you know it should just be out you know and that's what i think is so beautiful and i think with spotify to have access to immerse ourselves in any like sonic world at any time and to like learn you know if that in that day when we were playing together it's like oh if you heard of whatever pearl jam it's like i gotta go to the store and i gotta buy the record which is an amazing experience and that's i'm just saying yep, yeah. you know it's not as direct you know you got to go home and spin it and the whole thing whereas now it's like we can share music so much faster it's just incredible yeah. you know yes the other side of it mm -hmm. right is that our attention spans have have become shorter yeah you know with with all of this and so our patience to give something a chance and to really sit with it and understand it, I think has kind of dwindled a little yeah. bit. Um, and everything is very like oversaturated. Yes. And so there's that side as well, yep. you know, but I think in my opinion, I think it's beautiful that anybody can you know, record something yes. and, and put it out there. And, you know, I just think it's, I think it's awesome. Well, and the price of the equipment to make the recordings has mm -hmm. dropped significantly, and the quality of them has has dropped. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's a, big, has, that's a big point. Yeah, accessibility is is much easier, and I mean, you can record on your phone now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, can I ask a little? Bit? I know that this last album of yeah. yours was fully self produced and recorded, yeah. correct? Uh, yeah, right, right here in the barn. Yeah, which I mean, maybe is a another attribute to our current options that we didn't have maybe back then. Absolutely. Yeah. This album is wonderful. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Really, really inspired by it. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the process of choosing to do this independently on your own, like fully, right? You didn't use a producer, correct? On this one? I didn't. No, I, I produced it myself, but it was a great, it was a long process, man. You know, to be honest, it, w it wasn't very like smooth and straight. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always used a producer, you know, for like every record. Um, but I started recording stuff in like high school on hip hop EJ too, mm -hmm. on my friends, you know, computer mm -hmm. in our dorm room, you know, mm -hmm. that's where like my journey started, like actually recording things. And I loved the process. And I just kind of, you know, when I when I graduated high school, you know, yeah, I got I was on Garage Band, and then and then it was Logic, and then um, I just through through working with people over the years, over the years, you just kind of learn something, learn something better. So I was making like my own demos, you know, like for you know a few years, and kind of bringing those to like whatever. Uh, producer I was working with is kind of like these blueprints of like, you know, what I wanted to do. And I would just take them as far as I could until I knew like, okay, I need like somebody to like help me out with this. In that process, sometimes with the producer, you know, because you have somebody else's uh, vision and, and um, input and style, you know, that's the beauty of working with a producer. But if you're kind of like a yes person like i am you know you're like yeah yeah and then afterwards you're like oh, man i don't know if i was really feeling that but I'd, is that really me like type of thing yep i had worked with so many like amazing but amazing you know amazing producers all of which i've learned from but 
at, at, at this point in my artistic journey, I really wanted to like feel myself, you know, and I thought, man, I think I might be able to, to do this. Like, like, I think I have enough tools at this point to like, maybe have the equipment to do this and just like feel what my energy is and like yeah. trust my instincts without any like external input mm. as an artist. It was just like, I needed to gain that confidence or something, you know? Yeah, I just needed to do it, you know, so it's really important. There's so many producers that I want to work with and, you know, that I still want to make albums with. It was just like at this point, it was like, I need to feel myself. And I think this is going to help me if I do it, you know, on my own. I, I, I definitely had help, you know, obviously, and like glitches and which mic should I get and how do I record this th this way and, you know, right. like this. But um yeah, I was definitely like in the driver's seat. I thought the record was done at like so many different, different points. There would be so many moments like, okay, I think I got the record. I think it's done. But then I'd learn something else. I'd learn some more. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, no, I'm not. This isn't done. I got to keep, you know. <laughs> so it was kind of agonizing. And then it came together. And I'm really, really proud of it. Just because, yeah, you did, you know, I did it on my own. And, Wow, I can do that if I want to do it. I don't know if I want to do it again right now, but <laughs> but I can do it if I want to do it, yeah. you know. Yeah. Did you like not having the restraints of being on a time limit or working with a producer for this long or you were able to Yeah, I think I did and I didn't. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes when like in the past it's like, okay, I'm gonna go record this record. I'm going for a month to North Carolina, you know, that was the record before. And it's like, okay, we're gonna make a record in this time frame it kind of helped me like kind of looking yeah you know whereas like being here in the bar and i just walk out here every day and like wow this is cool i gotta put this on so you know it's like there was that was beautiful because it was so open and free and i didn't feel like i had pressure but also at the same time i it, it didn't give me like the structure that you know, perhaps that time frame gives you and helps you complete something. Yeah. So it was a little, it was a little bit of both. It was a little bit of both. Yeah. The struggle sometimes increases the result, you know, I mean. It's... Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm proud of, you know, I'm proud of myself that I'm able to like do, do it. Like I, I was working with this other artist, uh, you know, a few months ago and they were in here and she said like, Oh, you're, you know, you're so lucky that you know how to do this. Cause like me as a, at home, you know, I have to just sing it into my voice memo and wait until I can get it, book a session with. And that really hit me. And I was like, yeah, God damn, you know, I am grateful that like I have this freedom, you know, cause I didn't yeah. really try it just kind of like happened as yeah. in the course of my yeah. journey. So, yeah, well, I mean, and that, that's always going to be an asset, right? I mean, yeah. you're able to just create the moment you have an idea and whatever happens next can happen next right yeah for sure for sure and so here this album is out now and um yeah and you've got some pretty big shows coming up um is this tour different than any others that you've done who targeting different areas? yeah i mean i wouldn't even call it like a tour in a way i feel like um because we're about to have another child you know um uh, congratulations we're Thank you. We're this year is like kind of like uh I don't want to be away that much, you know. Yeah. And so trying to see yeah, just see how much I can do. I think it's just gonna be kind of decided as it comes, like as the work comes, you know. Yeah. And that's another know, beauty, right? Of yeah, I don't know if it's gonna be a more like more introvert not 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 introvert, but just more studio focused year so i can stay you know stay cooking but also be with my family uh, in this like you know special time yeah so yeah but we have with that being said we have some big shows that we've already scheduled that super excited about uh we're playing with the symphony and and at red rocks this summer um as june 9th right june 9th yeah and um are on some, you know, bigger festivals that we've been trying to get on like Ocean's Calling in Maryland and 
playing uh, some shows with Michael Franti right after Red Rocks. And, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, things are starting to pop up. No, no, just so, give me another test for you to know when to say no, huh? Because now you're gonna. Yeah, say- yeah, I've gotten better. I've gotten better. Luckily, at my booking agent is, you know, we, we're we're homies, you know, so he knows me by now, and we just our communication is good, and I don't feel the pressure of somebody like you got to work, 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 you know. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because that you don't really see more results by overworking, you know. You I- do not. You do not. And. um I think in this in this day and age too with social media there is that pressure to be constantly putting something out or else you're not doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Go yeah. away. That's not what oh, I no. want how I want to be feeling, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um so maybe it's a year of like learning that, you know. I don't yeah. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Um but most importantly, you know, is obviously the birth of our our next child so that's what we're focused on right now yeah yeah but I, I we also have like a lot of music projects you know because of being in the studio and stuff we have a lot of music projects coming out this year which we're excited about oh too. that's so great hopefully that just kind of keeps flowing yeah well, that's yeah. amazing and and that's all organic right i mean in, in yeah. the way that you're just following what what you're feeling next and yeah you know i'm following what i'm feeling next and there's no not really any set plan yeah you know it's just as i get older and like i think like i really you know the most important thing is to like feel good about what i'm doing you know yeah Yeah. um and and inspired that's it's such a gift to be inspired so yeah yeah, well, you you do make it look easy. <laughs> oh God, I you don't know. live in my head. You don't live in my head. You're not my shrink. I yeah, had you though. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a kitchen in that barn at all? Do you have a stove? We have. We don't have a stove. No. Because uh, I just moved from Boulder. I was out there 15 years, and I moved to Madison. And I say I need to get into the basement and start cooking. Because I'm trying to get my studio set up and everything. And everyone's like, oh, you have a stove down there? <laughs> what do you mean by that? And they're like, well, you just said you got to get cooking. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no. So it's just been really refreshing over the last part of here. You say, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I know how you feel. So I just <laughs> hear someone's like, you're cooking. Right on, right on. <laughs> Take are, you at, you're in Ma- are you in Madison, Wisconsin? Yeah, we did. I, uh, my wife Ann and I just moved here in December, but uh, I love I love Madison. Fifteen years, yeah. I'm falling in love with it every day. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, it's a different winter, but it's 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 just a very cool town. I love playing there. I love yeah coming through there. Good people. Look forward to seeing you next time you come through. Yeah, yeah. If we come through, yeah, please let us know. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for being here with us and yeah, share, sharing you. this journey that you've been on. Congratulations on the new album, all the success, and the growing family. Thank you. I, you know, we wish you nothing but more of that. Thank and, you so much. Well, thanks for everything you guys do. You know, I think it's, I'm very passionate about like, you know, giving our knowledge to the things we've learned as artists, like giving it to all these new artists coming up, you know, and the kids, because yeah. I wish somebody like told me a lot of stuff <laughs> when I know. I, I know. before I started, but it's such, it's such good work, you know? Yeah. So thank you for what, what y'all are doing. Yeah. All so. right. Well, we will keep in touch. Um, yes. Planning, planning on being there June 9th. So. Uh, oh, right on. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's good. <laughs> it's going to be phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I hope so. But yeah, thank you guys so much. And yeah, well, I'd, I'll, I'd love to come back anytime. Have Lots a great, of love. Have a yeah. great day. Take care. Oh, there's balloons. <laughs> Look at that. Did I do that? Yeah, yeah. That was the perfect exit. Look at that. Oh, my God. Wait, you're doing that, right? No, Don't. no, no. I'm if, so like, gullible. If you put up the thumb, or there's like different things it does. Oh. I don't know how. Oh, there it goes. Oh, oh it. there we go. There's my thumb. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wow. How did he time that so perfectly? Jeez, Louise. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, take care. Right. Take care, man. But let's go do it again. What an awesome conversation about fear and money. It was awesome 
to hear how unabashedly he was to say, I'm even uncomfortable talking about it right now. And first, when I listened back the first half, I thought we might have edited that out. But I was so glad to hear it in this last episode because that hit home for me. I really felt connected. And again, him just being so transparent and honest that you could feel it during the interview. Yeah. I mean, I think there's such a beautiful journey we all go on. And I'm I'm honestly surprised that it took me until my 30s to even recognize that I was on this journey of what my money mindset really is. You know, this this idea that that we have a relationship with money it doesn't even didn't even come into my conscious until my 30s. And it's really important that we could try to help people start that earlier on because you already have a relationship with money. It's not that you don't have one. It's that you don't recognize that it is one, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, and you can always be uncomfortable with a relationship. I mean, there's certain things I don't want to talk about with my son. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? But I'm still going to have those conversations because they really are important to help him. And it's the same with money. Money is probably one of them in some ways, but you know, and it wasn't what I was referring to, but the the idea that money is something that we have to have a good relationship with in order for us to manage it well is a very powerful statement and being able to talk about it in the music community is also something that's very important because we we don't really understand what money is unless we talk about it and the powerful thing that that we talked about here today with Trevor was that money is only energy right money is not good or bad it doesn't have any emotion at all. It is us that puts that emotion to it. And so talking about it here and giving everyone an understanding of that we're all really just trying to do our best with money is really important. He said he tries to be dry about it. So not giving it that kind of power, like you said, or emotion when he's discussing it. He also made the comment, we're not businessmen. You know, we're these artists. I, I have a feeling that if we can shift that perspective and be create more creative with money, we could not look at it from say a businessman type of view, but come up with ways to use it to fulfill our creative dreams and use it as a tool, just like you would an instrument to express yourself. You can use money to get those things you need out of life by giving it the energy it deserves. And it always, not always is not the word I want. It has such a negative connotation when it comes to the arts. And like you said, I hope that this podcast changes that for a lot of people. Yeah. Yes. Me you, too. Need it. you need it for marketing. You need it for promotion. You know, if you don't have the studio set up that Trevor has in his house, you may need to get money to go somewhere else. So, I like that taking the emotion out of it for when it can be used negatively against you, especially when people are stealing it from you or mismanaging you, taking money away from your dreams. But definitely it can be used as a tool to make all those dreams come true. Yeah. And the idea that we're not having to be responsible for all of the management of it is also a relief, you know, that... Yeah. We've talked a lot about, as our conversation went on with Trevor, about having people that you trust to help you understand things that you don't necessarily want to spend your time understanding on your own. There's a lot of things like that in the music industry that I'm not sure if they they truly would benefit you to completely understand them. You know, I mean, if you're really interested in it and passionate about it, then that's a reason to learn more about it. But then there's, there's certain things where it's just like, I need somebody that I can trust that can give me the advice I need to make I make good decisions with these with this particular situation. I I can listen to an awesome drummer all day. I can walk into a room and the first thing I hear is the drums and I can hear if it's slowing down, speeding up, if there's too much going on, if it's right in the pocket. I love it. I would never want to learn how to play drums. Because it's just too much for me. Too too much of my brain, right hand, left hand, right leg, left leg. I, I, it's going to take up too much time. But it's, I need, I need drums. 
I, I love it. And knowing that I get to play with some awesome musicians, I'm not going to, you let them be creative with what they're best at. And I think what you're saying too, with finding a team that could not only manage money or those different aspects of your career, that's their art form. That's what they do. And letting them do that is important as long as you can trust. Them. Yeah. Well, cause it's easy to be like, yeah, that, that drum part was really good. <laughs> or I didn't like that. Yeah. It's easy to be like, yeah, that money did well this year that I invested or it totally failed. You know, it's, but it's harder to know what the right choices are to make that those results. So, yeah. And, and, you know, having so many things that we can do ourselves now, it's nice to take some things off of that table. Right. I mean, we talked about, he self-produced that last album. That's a ton of work. It's a ton of work to release something that has that high of a production quality on your own. And, yeah. and he probably spent, I can't imagine how much time he spent learning all these new techniques and, relying on people that he could turn to for guidance on certain things he didn't know how to do yet. I'm sure. That was a lot. And to have to do that and manage money at the same time, that's too much. You know, like we have to take things off of our plate, off our recording studio table in order to make room for us to be creative. Our first episode, uh, we brought up pocket guard and it's been a while since then. And I've been getting notifications every week as far as like what I spent, where it went to, you know, much, much like mint. Remember when you had to write out everything, you yeah. know, having a tool like that is even helpful in this situation. And so pocket guard is a, a budgeting tool that we're definitely both attached to at this point. And mint is the old budgeting tool that is no longer available. In fact, I just got that email yesterday that said it's turning off. They, they, I guess it took longer than they thought to turn it off, but I'm sure that's a massive project project for them too. But having to start over has actually been good for me not to get too much onto the budgeting thing, but having to go back and be like, was my system as efficient as it could be? And having to start over on a new budgeting tool of pocket guard has, has pushed me to reevaluate that and make some adjustments. Uh, the last thing I want to say too is it's nice to talk to people who have families, who have kids. And, you know, I think I'm pushing a lot for guests this year that have families that, that have people depending on them because it's really important to know that that is also possible, first of all, but also that, that it, it's, it's possible to not only financially support a family, but to be emotionally present. You know, there's so much, it's just like the money thing in the, in the rock and world, rock and roll world has a stigma about it being not cool to want money or to, to appreciate money, I guess. I don't know how to say that. Right. But also when it comes to being with your family, like people think, oh, that's, they're going to be, you know, the missing parent throughout the career. And that's also not true. And it's, it's, it's possible to balance the two. It's possible to be present with your family even more, in fact. And, and the more that I feel like Trevor was talking about his family, the more that it connects to his music and the more that he's allowing his art to evolve from being a good family, you know, member. Next door to the post, there's this awesome backroom like venue and I was helping set up for a home vibe show. The band pulls up in the back and the first person comes out and I say, you know, welcome. My name's Dave. She's like, oh, hi, I'm, I'm just the babysitter. And I was like, ha ha ha, you know, you're taking care of the whole band. And then two kids come out <laughs> and she was really just the babysitter. There was a married couple in the band and brought their kids on the road. And that was something that they did as a family. And I was like, all right, right on. That was a first for me. Yeah. And I, I think that's a new generation thing like that. Perhaps it used to be more of an appropriate stigma to say you'd be a missing parent if you were on the road all the time as a rock and roll star. You know, nowadays there's new technology, there's new ideas, there's new ways of approaching this industry that allow us to be more present as a family member and also to, you know, allow us to schedule things in a way that makes us more flexible. And, and that's what, that's what Trevor's doing. And he's, 
got so much coming up, you know, and he's sort of letting the the situations develop as they go and say he said t- saying yes to the right things it's a very important skill as we talk about a lot but saying no to the right things is equally important and and allowing yourself to know what to do next sometimes is like well what, what's my family schedule look like today well i got to take the kids you know to the dentist which they literally have to do in about an hour <laughs> and <laughs> And, you know, because of that, I will, you know, work on some recording studio stuff and, and then, uh, you know, then I make time for them after that. So it just makes it a little bit more symbiotic in that way and that you're allowing the situation to tell you sometimes what to do next. What time is that appointment? 2.30? 2 o'clock. Oh. Why do you say that? 2.30? 2 2.30. Nice. Oh, uh, well, anyways, <laughs> this is also the side effect of, of being a family person, <laughs> it's bad, bad jokes. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe maybe that's just a gift that we have. I don't know. Um, but getting back to Trevor and, and to about all these great things that he's still finding time to do, including playing Red Rocks again here on June 9th, which is a great place to come and see him. and a great place to come see anybody, but he'll be playing with the Colorado Symphony. And, you know, obviously we'll have him attached to his website and all his information attached to our podcast here, but just know that you can just Google him and find a million things about him because he's that, he's that successful at this point that it's really easy to find him. So uh, what a great time I had chatting with him and I'm so grateful that we got to do that. Uh, he's inspired my music, honestly. Like, and I, I, I love meeting people and finding out they are as nice as we hoped they were. <laughs> you know, it's the music that much better, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It solidifies who the artist is. Is true, you know, and that's, I think, really important. I guess if we ever interview a goth person, we're gonna really want them to be truthfully goth you know like i want to know that this is how you eat and sleep (laughs) Uh, maybe not (laughs) well our action step today is use this as a reminder to pay attention to your relationship with money it is energy and is neither good or bad so what you and your emotions bring to money is what determines the rest we want the relationship to be healthy not obsessive, not jealous, not fearful, but loving, inspired, and abundant. And we know that your time is valuable, and we appreciate you spending this time here with us, being a part of this community. It's our hope that you feel that sense of community here at Musician Sip Jar, and that you'll help spread the word to make us all stronger. If you'd like to get a hold of us, what's the best way to do that? Send us an email at musicianstipjar at gmail. You can also swing by our website, musicianstipjar.com. Get some free resources, discount codes. Also, uh, drop your email and get our free budget and forecasting tool. And if you find this information useful, please take a moment to rate and subscribe to the podcast so that we can help keep you up on the finance side of your music business. As always, thank you for joining us. Remember, there is already enough for everyone. You just need to know how to get it. Until next time, on behalf of Dave Tamkin and myself, Chris Webb, Stay happy, healthy, and wealthy. As Deepak Chopra said, money is life energy that we exchange and use as a result of the service we provide to the universe. This is Musician's Tip Jar. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, business, or financial professional for individualized advice. Individual results are not guaranteed, and all discussed strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The hosts are operating on behalf of Musician's Tip Jar, LLC exclusively.